Here she goes. Here it is. the sweet mellow tones of a 50 year old vintage Super XL from Homelite. If you grew up in New England like I did, you probably heard that sound pretty much every fall and winter when your dad or granddad was cutting firewood. This was my dad's chainsaw when I was a kid. Those old saws do not have kickback protection at all. I caught kickback on film. I was lucky enough when I was letting my focus drift a little bit. For you Homelite collectors out there, it sounds great, it works great. You really have to be careful and you really have to know your surroundings. I was getting tired and I'm gonna make this video to help illustrate the dangers of kickback, show what you can do to prevent it, and also give some great sounds of a vintage saw running because there's nothing better than that. All right, you guys, this is my favorite sound in the world. Ah, oh, these old saws are a little hard to start. Choke it. Wait till it burps. And we're off to the races. Oh, it's sweet. Carburetor's nice and clean. Just gotta give it a little extra goose and let it warm up. Check the chain tension here. We're set. And we are good to go. I've got a 16 inch bar, 3 eighths chain, full chisel. Okay, so a lot of plunge cuts, which are necessary because you have to get through these big pieces. I like to think I'm pretty strong, but you know, try moving this stuff around all day and wrestling with it. It, it gets old, and I didn't want to just go buy a great big long bar or a chainsaw that would, would go with it. So I decided that I would use this. As I'm working here, you know, and by the way, this is just such a sweet sound of nostalgia, isn't it? Did you guys ever hear this? I mean, growing up in New England, outside Boston, there was always one of these running. You know, my dad had one, my grandfather had one. Um, they were featured on the shelves of Sears. Um, it's just a great saw, and there's a lot of them still running today. You see a lot of them on eBay. They're in perfect working condition, or a lot of people restore them because it's just a great powerhouse saw. It's very torquey. Not as high RPMs as a new saw. Uh, I have another comparison video of this in a Husqvarna 460 Rancher with a 24 inch bar. Um, they're pretty much neck and neck, so I'll put a video for that as well. But yeah, um, it's kind of like having a Harley Davidson, you know, versus a crotch rocket motorcycle. You know, I mean, the Harley just has so much torque, low end torque. So um, the saw's got a lot of power. Because these saws don't have an automatic oiler, so you have to press that button. See, I'm pressing it with my hand right there, and then I'm making sure the saw is off right now to um, try to dispel some of the chips and things. This wood is very, very dirty, and I didn't have a pressure washer at the time um, or a hose. So I just started cutting, and um, you know, I would encounter nails because the trees are really old, signs, things that grew into the tree long ago. I think I'm cutting this one um, the long way because there were nails in it or bolts or something that I kept hitting the other way and then that that dirt and rot would just keep binding so the saw is actually really powerful it got through it but every once in a while something got wedged so I'd shut it off and um, and just get that stuff out and then make sure that the oil was getting through the bar so you know sometimes you when it's really hot and you put some oil like I just pumped it there um, but it just flings the oil right off. It doesn't get into the bar where it needs to go. So I would just manually kind of like make sure it got in there. And this is really hard wood. And I was getting some, you know, sort of scorch marks on the bar. It was it was really binding. And, you know, it got through no problem. But I didn't want to tax the saw too, too much. And here's the Craftsman making an appearance. This is a 46cc Craftsman. It's still available at Lowe's. I got this one at a Lowe's in Virginia when I was visiting my friend and drove it up to Massachusetts. Um... So that just made an appearance to get the final cut because I have a 20-inch bar on that one. 
Um, 46cc Craftsman. Chain's a little loose, as you can see, but that's okay. Oh, and these chains that come with it, don't use that safety chain, because it's just that, that weird semi-chisel chain. It's, like, impossible to sharpen it. You can't do any plunge cuts, so I ended up replacing that. I didn't. I had no idea, because I was... I didn't really look closely to that chain, I guess. That was the before and after picture, the logs then and there. So my neighbor has a, a log splitter. He's going to put those in. So now this is where the kickback problem happened, okay? And I want to get serious and talk to you guys about this because these old saws don't have any safety protection at all. Obviously, it's fun to use them. It's nostalgic, but they don't have any protection, okay? So here's me cleaning up uh, the area. There's tons of poison ivy, by the way. So I did not put a video of the reaction that occurred. My arms and legs. Actually, mostly my arms. Here's a trick I wanted to show you guys. If you don't have access to one of those bucking levers, which are usually actually pretty narrow anyway, I thought better than to use the Craftsman. It's not powerful enough. So you make a little notch on the end of the log, and then I have my dad's old, big old honking crowbar. So you make a notch, and especially with hardwood, it works great if there's a knot and you can't really easily move the log and roll it. So I rolled it like this, watch. Nice and easy, over she goes. The crowbar will hold it in place. Actually, the knots hold it in place, and then I can easily cut from one side and roll it back. You can see now that my shirt is starting to get sweated through at this point. So you can see it's pretty much soaked by the time I get to the critical moment. So I got through this log, no problem. You know, this is obviously in the space of maybe, what, a half an hour I'm doing this. So I'm getting pretty tired, probably over a half an hour. So you can see my sh my shirt is pretty much soaked through at this point. Now it started, it was almost dry. So this is the back here. Now I'm going to zoom in closely. This is the position I'm in when the kickback occurred. You can see I'm fighting with the kerf a little bit. That's the cut, the hole where the cut is. Fighting with the saw. I'm still looking. See, you see me look down and see how much clearance I have, but I'm at the bottom of the cut. Now watch. Boom. You see that? Eesh. You see the shockwave travel up my arm, wrench my hand off the handle, and if it hadn't caught in the kerf on the side, the, the chain, I would have been toast. It would have wrecked my arm. There's no kickback protection on these saws, like I said. So here I am. I'm, I decided maybe I had a lightsaber, and I was gonna, there's the bar on the bottom, and that's the bar, and I was going to do an upwards motion of cutting. And uh, there's my fulcrum on the bottom with the circle. And I was just going to take the tip towards the top and, and widen my curve. That's a no-no. That causes the kickback. So there's the kickback actually happening right there. It's headed right towards me and my arm. And my elbow is bent. It's not behind the saw where it should be kind of enforcing. So and you could see my thumb was actually fully wrapped around, but it got wrenched off by the force. So there's the kerf protecting me. Good old kerf. And then... You can see the shockwave going up my elbow into my tricep and back into my lats just from the, the saw kind of shaking itself free, and my thumb actually gets wrestled loose. So my left hand comes off, and the momentum and the shockwave kind of wiggles the saw, kind of, kind of felt like a snake in my hands, just like slashing back and forth like a big, angry swordfish. So here it is again. <laughs> Well, that's not supposed to happen. So you can see from all the other YouTube videos out there, I'm sure you guys have been watching on kickback or you should be watching them for safety. Never, ever, ever cut with the tip. That point of the tip on the top. Okay, it's not a lightsaber. You know, we're not talking Star Wars, so you can't just cut in any direction you want. It's a chainsaw, you have to cut downwards 
use the bottom part of the tip if you're doing a plunge cut, enter the tree, and then gradually guide the bar into the bark or into the tree. And typically you're cutting, you're doing a cross cut. Okay, you're not going with the line of the fibers. I want you guys to do me a favor, okay? A lot of times YouTubers say, like, comment, subscribe. Okay, I want you to comment and subscribe, and I want you to leave a negative comment. Okay, most people want positive comments. For this video, I want all the negative comments you can muster. Okay, because I deserve it for that one. I was a knucklehead. It almost ended badly. I was really lucky. But I want those negative comments to pile up. Because hopefully anyone who's looking and learning about kickback, which you should be doing uh, before you start running a chainsaw anyway, somebody finds this video and it helps them and it helps them avoid kickback. So the safest part to use on a chainsaw to cut with is the pulling chain on the bottom as opposed to the pushing chain on the top. Okay, but if you must use the pushing chain on the top, definitely do not use that tip. Okay, because it's transferring the rotational energy into upward energy and that upward energy almost went into my arm and or my face and no one looks good after a chainsaw to the face it's a saw okay so it's a lot of fun it's great to hold that power in your hand and just experience the contrast of having this big intractable log fall into pieces at your will but it's a huge responsibility and you can't let your focus lapse for a second if you feel fatigue if you feel tired that's the time to stop have a break, have some water, some Powerade. I don't know if I could say that, I'm not getting sponsored by them yet. I like blue Powerade, what can I say? Drink those after hockey games. But leave a comment, positive ones are nice too. What? A negative comment, uh, just say like, hey, you're a knucklehead, don't ever do what this guy's doing. That'll help somebody else, okay? And that's what I want from this video. If you'd like to see a correct use of a plunge cut, you can watch this next video. It's using a Husqvarna 460 Rancher to take down a hardwood tree and I used a plunge cut. It was my first tree ever taking down of that size, so it was a lot of fun. I missed the neighbor's fence. See you guys soon. Like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, give me some feedback on this. I hope it helps you guys. All right, later.